Well, what's happening? Here you are. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, look, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We have no control or else we wouldn't have done what we did. I'm telling you. I know if I had control, things would have been significantly different. Fair enough. Fair point. All right. Well, listen, this is Green Bean, and I want to welcome you to episode 93 of Green Bean's Jets Pod. And it's not such a good day. It's not a good day. Let me shoot real straight with you guys. I'm just going to come right out and say it. I wanted to beat the Patriots. I did. I'm just going to lay that out there right now. But not only did I want to beat the Patriots, I thought we could have beat the Patriots. Okay? Now, not only did I think we could have beat the Patriots, I thought we should have beat the Patriots. Not only did I think we should have beat the Patriots, but I actually thought, and this is where the pain is, man. This is where I found it. This is where the pain lives. I thought we were going to beat the Patriots. Now, what is it with this team, huh? What is it? What is it? Because clearly, they are not a better team than us. Clearly. All sorts of warts. All, all sorts of holes and weaknesses. And, and even though the game was 3-3 three, three with 10 seconds left or whatever it was, they kicked our ass all over the place. They did. It was, it was just a weird thing. They just missed field goals or it just blew it at the end. You know what I mean? Like, and you got to give credit to our defense, right? You got to give credit to the, the defense who was out there almost all day. It's crazy. You know, it's crazy. It's a crazy day. Now, before we get all the way into that, we're just gonna, we're gonna just put it out here. We're gonna lay it all right down here. Jets fans have a right to be upset about this one. There were numerous facets of today's presentation of New York Jets football that was uh, head scratching. What? Why? Wait, which? Who? We were doing that all day. All day. And at the at the ground floor of this, all we had to do was score a touchdown. Or at the end, we had to get a first down. I don't even know. It's like it was way, It was like right here. You know, like like you drop your keys down the back of a cow and you, and you reach it and you can touch it. Yeah, you just can't get it, no matter what. You know what I mean? Like that's what it was like. But uh, there's a big. There's a couple big reasons that we have to talk about today. There's a couple things, man. We got to just put it out there. We have to put it out there. Now, I try to be a constructive guy, and dare I say, I try to be a positive guy whenever I can. It's like you can't watch your house burn down and go, hmm, well, hey, at least we'll get a new house. Like, you get, it's, no, it's, it's a bad thing. You can react to bad things, right, and not be a negative guy. You can see something burning and talk about how it sucks to, the, you know, the fact that that's burning. You can do that and not be a negative guy. So I try to be a positive guy as best I can. As best I can. It's hard. It's hard with this team. But let's say it. We're 6-4. and four. If somebody told us that we'd be 6-4 and four right now at the beginning of the season, we would have, I know. We would have been happy. I get it. I do. I get it. And you're right. You're right. If somebody would have said at the beginning of the season, the Jets will be 6-4. and four, Week 10 or week 11. We say, oh, great. Yeah, I'll take that. But things change and details matter and variables that come into play change expectations. So that's the way it is. And it doesn't matter about anything else. We wanted to beat the Patriots. Last time we played them, our quarterback decides to throw three terrible interceptions. Terrible. Basically lost the game for us. In addition to some penalties and blah, 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 blah. In this week's game, 
He didn't throw three interceptions partially because they dropped them. They were there. The interceptions were there. You know it. I know it. The stat line of nine for 22 for 77 yards is, even though that's atrocious and sad, it's worse than that. You know it. I know it. He threw numerous interceptions into the hands of defenders and they dropped them. Now, thank you. It happens. We drop interceptions, so it is what it is. But we know. We know. We know what's up. So we're going to talk about these things. We're going to talk about the quarterback. We're going to talk about the coaching. We'll talk about specific facets of the coaching. And we'll even talk about players, other players and the impact that this is going to have. All right? We're going to do all that today. Because we got to do it. We have to talk about this. It's not a week to be positive. Now, we're going to play the Bears. They're all buzzed up. They think Justin Fields is the second coming. We have a different experience going on than the Bears. And we'll see how that's going to go. But we got to talk about our team and we got to talk about this week's game. We have to talk about the AFC East. And sadly, we went from sitting alone on top of the AFC East to hanging on by the skin of our teeth at the bottom of the AFC East. It's like that. It's that thin of a margin between everybody. First with a win, fourth with a loss. And we chose fourth because that's what we do. And it sucks. And it sucks for you. It sucks for Jets fans. It sucks. I wish this team would understand and realize, truly realize, that this was a game not to lose at all costs. If you need to bench somebody and stick somebody, you need to do it at all costs. We don't care about your overall plan. We don't. Not during this game. We don't care. All costs. And we didn't do that. And the team doesn't realize it. And I get, you know, you know, Joe Douglas, Robert Sala, they're all super even. I get it. Doing a great job. You needed to win. This game, you lost twice. You made us endure this shit two more times. And it's not fair, man. It's not fair. Ugh. <sighs> So before we get into all that, I'd like to remind you to like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Get that out of the way. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subs by December 31st, which is my two-year anniversary on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time. Hit that subscribe button and help me get to the goal of 10,000 before my two-year anniversary. The other thing is hitting like really helps the video. It helps the channel. You'd be surprised. YouTube really values this like thing. Hit the like if you want to be reminded anytime that something comes out of the channel. Hit the bell. Ooh, subscribe, like, bell. Oh, my gosh. If you really want to be nice, go ahead and share this video with other people. Somebody who never heard of me. You click on share. You go, hey, what about this? Check this guy out. Oh, my God. YouTube throws confetti. They mail us confetti when that happens. Look at this. Oh, my God. What a catch. Wow, Sutton. Crazy catch by... Uh, by uh, Russell Wilson. Crazy. Over the show like that. Very good. Very good catch. So it's tough. It's tough. And, uh, you know, we did our live stream during the game uh, this week. It's a good time. And I like that we can, uh, we can, you know, be together. Okay? I'll say it like that. I like that we can be together. I'd be alone in Fork Union, Virginia, watching the Jets by myself. Well, me and my son, we'd be sitting here. Now I got all of you, so it's cool. But there are two factions, kind of, that are forming, right? In, the, the, in, in our streams, and I think in Jet Nation as a whole. Here's, what, here's the way it goes. There's one side of things that absolutely loved Zach Wilson coming out. Loved him said things or like drank the Kool-Aid that he was a hybrid between Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. Remember that stuff? 
which I thought was funny at the time. I got to tell you, I'd be like, really? The two greatest quarterbacks in the game, this is a hybrid of both. That's how good he is. From BYU. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a faction that loves him. And they've picked up people on that side. Let's talk about this side. So they have, they're a contingent. They believe they got time. They're supportive and all the stuff. And they've picked up people that maybe didn't love him coming out, but he's our quarterback and they support him and all the stuff. Okay, so they're on board. That's one side. They're behind Zach Wilson. Then there's the other side that didn't like him coming out or didn't really think he was all that much, you know, all that much to crow about. Maybe take a trade back and grab Justin Fields. Maybe take it to get three firsts and a third and grab Mac Jones. I mean, you know, there's that side. And a lot of them have been supportive as well. They were, he's our quarterback. You want him to do well. But throughout the last year and a half, now he just played, I think it's his 20th game as a starting NFL quarterback. That side, who didn't really love him in the first place, they're finding it difficult to, to see the glass half full. He's really an erratic player. He struggles with simple things that seemingly any quarterback uh, could, should, w w does do. You know what I mean? So there's that. So that side is getting a lot more forceful they're getting a lot of momentum behind them every time Zach Wilson plays a game like this week against the New England Patriots now the interesting thing is this side over here the supportive side they're getting smaller less and less and less you want to know why and it's not that everybody here both sides want him to win of course they do they want him to throw for 380 four touchdowns Every single week, both sides. There's a couple jerks in there that just like they love. <laughs> I want them to suck. There's those guys. There's a, they're, they're sprinkles. You know, they're barely anything. They exist. But generally speaking, both sides want him to do well. But the supportive side is getting less. They're thinning out. And the reason is, it's becoming harder and harder to defend this kid. Yes, it's 20 games. We get it. But have we really seen quarterback play this bad this many times? Now, Sam Darnold had a lot of that. Sam Darnold was a problem. The difference between Sam and Zach is, number one, Sam had two systems his first two years. He had two completely different systems. Another thing is Sam never had a quarterback coach, not once. Jeremy Bates didn't want a quarterback coach when he was under Todd Bowles, and Adam Gase didn't want a quarterback coach. Adam Gase didn't even really want an offensive coordinator. He called Dowell Loggins his offensive coordinator, which he's not. Yeah, everybody knows this, right? So he didn't have a quarterback coach uh, his whole career with the New York Jets. In addition to that, he had the 31st, offensive line in the league or 32nd for the three years 31st or 32nd offensive line in addition to that sam never really had weapons he had like a revolving door of wide receiver he had crowder and he had robbie anderson but they were you know crowder was hurt a lot like he was just he didn't have much going on he always had different guys no real running game to speak of right we know, we know we were there. We are, we had the debates, we had the discussions and the arguments and the whole thing. The big difference between Sam Darnold's experience as a Jets quarterback and, and Zach Wilson's, big difference. And the truth is, is Sam showed significantly more than Zach did or has up to this point. It's just the truth. It's the truth. Not, not just, you know, people are going to say, bullshit, Sam. I, I get it. I'm just telling you, numerically and, and all that jazz, Sam made more out of less than Zach Wilson is up to this point. That's the truth of it. So it's getting harder and harder 
to defend Zach Wilson. So today, when you look at a game that was so important, now you his last time playing the Patriots, he threw for 350, his first 300-yard game, which is another thing, right? It's his first game over 300 yards, but he happens to throw three interceptions as well. And they were the kind of interceptions that lost us the game because it was a very tight game. All right, so it is what it is. But you expect him to come out in this game and be laser-focused. He came out from play one or the let's just say the first three plays. We all said it. You could see it. He was already nervous. He, he arrived nervous, anxious, amped up, whatever it is, overthinking it. You could see it in his feet. You could see it in his, in his body. You could see it right away. So what is that? Why can't we, why can't he just throw the ball to the guys? Why can't he do that? So we give him all day, right? He ends up throwing the ball 22 times. Uh, for He has nine completions, which is a 24.4 uh, quarterback rating. It's pretty good. Zero touchdowns. Zero interceptions, uh, like, we, like, we, like, like I said, he had really a couple, I think it was two, that could have been interceptions, easily. Like hit the guy in the chest kind of a thing. But that is what it is. 77 yards is bad. Now, Zach Wilson has seven interceptions against the Patriots coming into this game. Now he has 77 yards and, uh, and really uh, just a terrible game. Terrible game. Missing guys all over the place. High, low, wide, just all over the... Even some of the catches were very difficult. Like Garrett Wilson diving to the ground. Like, just stuff like... There's, it's just... There's very few really easy passes. So this side, the supportive side, this week, numerous supporters, known, loud, vocal supporters of Zach Wilson... Threw in the towel. Threw in the towel this week. I'm done. I can't support this guy. I can't defend him anymore. Now, that's not to say they're going to stop rooting for him. He's our quarterback. We're going to watch them bring him out next week. We're going to watch it. He's going to play Justin Fields next week. It's going to happen. So it's not that everybody's not going to be rooting for him, but the idea of defending this kid, he's losing his supporters. Now, here's the... the dangerous part about it he can be as snippy as he wants he can be frustrated and in his post-game presser he was upset you know he was kind of a little snarky yeah i mean obviously it sucks to lose that way but we're gonna move on from it and learn from it that's all a little snarky and i get it and i understand it mm, but he was asked the question do you think the uh, you only scored three points and the defense held them to three points do you think maybe you let them down instead of saying like yeah of course. He said no and walked away. Take a listen. As an offense, though, I mean, when you guys are only able to score three points, the defense only lets up three points. I mean, do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. 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 No, I don't. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. But it dovetails with what else, with the other thing I'm going to say to you today. It seems to me that different members of the team are getting increasingly frustrated. We have a powerhouse. Now, maybe not Super Bowl level, but absolutely able to score more than three points level of football team on offense. We got Conklin. We got Uzoma. We got Michael Carter. We got James Robinson. Clearly, we have Ty Johnson. We're reminded constantly of that one. We have Garrett Wilson. We have Elijah Moore. We have Denzel Mims. We have Braxton Berrios. We have Corey Davis when he's healthy. There's a lot of potency on this offense. and We can't get anything done. Now, the offensive line, we're playing our third guard today. We're at our fifth tackle. We know this. They played well. Not great. They had their, they had their moments. Don't tell them. More than enough of that game, the offensive line did their job. And then you can see the frustration on players' faces. Now, the offensive players, his receivers. Garrett Wilson was visibly upset. Elijah Moore has asked for a trade and has said he doesn't have chemistry. You know, I don't, have, I don't, I don't get the ball. What do you mean chemistry? 
And that could be toward LaFleur. But the rumor coming out during that whole melee was that his frustration is with Zach Wilson. He doesn't believe Zach's got the chops to get him the ball enough so the NFL can see what kind of receiver he really is. Therefore, warranting a big paycheck when his rookie contract is over. That's what he's aiming for. He doesn't believe Zach Wilson is a guy. That's the rumor. But he asked for a trade. Now, Denzel Mims asked for a trade earlier. Don't think that had so much to do with Zach, but here we are. We got Denzel Mims asked for a trade. Elijah Moore asked for a trade. And then now we got Garrett Wilson, who's huffing and puffing and looked pissed in his postgame presser. Does these, these guys don't look happy. Now, like Zach Wilson said in his press conference, he said, look, there are times I'm frustrated with them. There are times they're frustrated with me. We communicate, we talk, and we try to get better. That's, a, that's what we're doing. CBS cameras caught Garrett and, and Denzel a little upset after a couple of the missed passes. Did they say anything to you, or have you talked to them on the sideline after that, or is it just heat of the moment? No, I mean, we're all close. We're all talking and communicating. I mean, there's stuff that, you know, I want them to do different. I get frustrated as well. And then there's stuff that, you know, I miss a throw high there, and they're frustrated as well. So, I mean, it goes both ways. This isn't anyone pointing fingers here. This is everybody, you know, taking accountability here, and everyone's trying to get better. Yeah, that's all well and good. And that's, that's I'm happy to hear it. At some point, man. They're going to get upset, and I think they're there. Now, he played a decent game in Buffalo, right? We know that. But we're calling it a good game, and, and it was. It's fine. We won, and we're very, very happy with the results of the Buffalo game. But let's be real. He had 18 completions for 154 yards, and that's like we're clinging onto 154 yards as good for him. And that's where it is. So I'm concerned. I see it. I get the DMs. I see it in the chats, in our live streams. I'm getting the phone calls. How many people on this side, on the supportive side, are jumping ship? He's losing us. And if he's losing us out here, and you can see the frustration on the team, and then he's asked if he thinks he's letting the the defense down, and he says no and walks out? I don't know. Now, let's, let's fold this over into what's going on around him. All right? So you got these coaches. You got these coaches that, by and large, have done a good job. You can't say otherwise. We're 6-3 and three going into the bye. We're 6-4 and four now. You know, exceeding expectations, ahead of schedule, as we say. So you got to take the the bad with the good, right? They're, the results are speaking for themselves, and that's with all the mistakes and the sloppiness and all that. But you got to look at the, the, the systemic stuff, the stuff that's there all the time, the consistent aspects of what we're seeing. Now, if we're going to complain about Zach Wilson, we're going to say, dude, he doesn't have it. The guy, the kid sucks. And believe me, it's out there. It's out there right now. It's everywhere. Zach Wilson is not the guy. We should have put at least Mike White in for the fourth quarter, just like the, the first game. We could have won the game with simple dump-off passes, which were open a lot of the time. Maybe, yeah. So that's all well and good. But if we're going to complain about Zach Wilson, you have, to you have to at least take a look at what's going on around him. Now, we do have the offensive line issue. So he feels unsettled with the offensive line. He's on his third guard and the whole thing. He's got a Bouye and Feeney. Who are these guys, right? We don't even know. It's like, look at all these new faces. So he could be a little bit untrusting there. You got to give that to him. In addition to that... What's with the play calling? What, like, what? It doesn't it seem crazy? Like, let me just bring just a couple examples up to you and see what you think. Number one, what the hell is Ty Johnson doing out there? Now, we don't know. Maybe James Robinson's injured, and that's what we have to consider. We do, but why still Ty Johnson, who's a very unreliable, he should be not even really on the team, but he's third, he should be the fourth back. He's just not. Very good. Okay? We've seen him drop passes. He gets blown up in pass protection. He's just not a very good player. 
every now and then with the ball in his hands, he does something very exciting, and you give him that. But they're shoehorning him into the offense all the time. And today they have him, they have him lined up wide out there in the X. Now, that's one thing. I don't know why you got Ty Johnson out there on this on the on the sideline anyway. But then you throw him the ball. That's the route that you're hitting. And then you gotta well, you gotta wonder why a guy like Garrett Wilson or Elijah Moore is frustrated. So there's that. But here's the thing that we're seeing all the time, and this actually applies to that, what I just said about the 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 running backs getting sent out wide. We see it with tight ends too. Tight ends all the way out wide. Why? Playing split end. Why? They're tight ends for a reason. The other thing is, on third downs, and let's just talk about the last one. Now, whatever the hell that last minute was for the Jets, we had the ball, we got the holding, we had a first down, you know, we we had a minute left to go down. All you had to do is get in the field goal range and you win the game. That's it. It's ours. The gift has been given. We run a whole bunch of time off the clock. So that's Sala. Sala and LaFleur are talking. They decide, let's waste 30 seconds. I don't know why. They get to third down. They have no urgency. They're huddling with a minute left. They're, they're, they're not playing two minute. They're huddling. And they come out, and they don't have a play ready. They're trying to draw them off sides to get the first down. So that doesn't work. So you waste more time. And you get a delay of game. You, you back it up, then you throw it. It's like it doesn't make any sense. But this is the thing that's bothering everybody is that LaFleur empties the backfield on third or fourth and short. We've been talking about this all year. Somebody has to explain to me why that's such a positive that that's what we do more than not. The idea that you have a running back in the backfield to give the defense at least the concern that you're going to hand it to the running back who's going to get the yard or two yards, you have to, you have to cause them to think about it. You empty the backfield. You let them know what? There is no threat of running the ball. It's gone. It doesn't exist. Unless the guy's in motion or so you can hand it you know, to him that way or sweep or something along those lines. We do it more than not. We have these complicated third and short, fourth down and short. Whenever we're doing that, we all these complicated stuff. Now, does that help Zach Wilson? Does it help him or hinder? Making him think, you know, all these, rather than just quick slant, boom, there you go, first down. Zach, you know, Elijah Moore in the slot, boom, there, done, first down. Six feet. That's what two yards are. Two yards are six feet. One yard is three feet. Three feet. It's a yard. That's it. There you go. So we have to ask ourselves where the problem lies. Now, the other comeback to what I'm talking about, like that LaFleur is not doing Zach any favors, and I think that's valid. So a lot of people have that concern. I think that's valid, but... There are numerous times where the guy is open. LaFleur is scheming guys open. Whether it's one guy, two guys, running back, check, somebody's open. Zach sees them and throws it five feet over their head. Or he throws it two yards into the dirt before it gets to their feet. If those were getting hit, first down here, first down there, eight yards here, 12 yards. If those were happening, would we be even talking about LaFleur's play calling? Would we even have the concern? Because the plays are there. The plays are there. Would we even be talking about it? And that's the thing. There are tears to this. What it boils down to from my standpoint. Now, look, we've deconstructed a lot of it. The supportive side, the unsupportive side, the LaFleur, the Sala, the Zach. What it boils down to. Here's my two cents. You ready for my two cents? My two cents is this. The kid has to be able to hit a screen pass if we ever call one. He's got to be able to hit a dump off. He's got to be able to hit a wide receiver screen and not throw it six feet in the air so the guy has to jump 
full extension into the year. We can't have that. Once in a while, sure. Every play, he's got to be able to hit that stuff or he's not an NFL quarterback. It's, it's like, for me, it's very simple. Now, I am with the argument it's only his 20th game. You can't write him off yet. He can come out in the, against the Bears, and he can throw for 290 and two touchdowns. Right, and we're singing a different tune. I understand. Totally. And that's why you still got to give him the rest of the season. You got to do it. But in a game like this, just like I said in the first Patriots game, I really believe at the fourth quarter, you should have just put Mike White in. Give your other core, give the team an opportunity to win. It's not all about this kid. It's not about one person. It's about millions of us. And we're watching one guy who can't do it in this moment. Can't we take someone, sit him down, put another guy in, see if he's can do, just do it. Get us three points and we win. And then you can talk about it this week. You can sit them down and start them next week. Who cares? Why does the whole of the Jets organization have to endure it? The wide receivers are frustrated. The offensive line's probably frustrated. The coaches are probably frustrated. The defense is obviously, I mean, they have to be. Yeah, big stand. Woo! They go sit down. They get a squirt of water and they're running back on. The, oh, yeah, by the way, come on. What do you mean? I just sat down. No, it's, you're back. Zach sucks. And then there's obviously, there's us right out here. Must we endure it? You got to be able to be a living, breathing entity. You have to respond to what's in front of you. You have to. You have to respond to what's going on in real time. If the kid's shaking and sucking his thumb, sit him down and put somebody else in there who's not. That's what I think. That's what I think. And you can start him next week and start the whole process over and you can do all the things. So I'm supportive of Zach finishing the season and seeing what we have. But I'm starting to think that the rest of the organization, all the way down to little old us, out here, we shouldn't all have to endure this for one guy. Sauce Gardner lights out. Did Quinn and Williams crazy? Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore running around. Yeah. So there you go. Now the LaFleur thing is, is interesting to me. Because he does do good things. And again, I feel like if he if we were able to hit the plays that he schemes open, and look, I watched the All-22. I see there's numerous plays where guys are wide open. Zach either doesn't see them for whatever reason. Sometimes the guys are directly in front of him. Literally, six yards right in front of you. It's third and two. Why aren't you throwing it to him? And other times, he sees them and doesn't hit them. He misses them. So there's a lot. Now, if those were getting hit, if those plays that worked, everything about the play worked, if the quarterback hit the wide receiver, would we be having that side of the discussion? I don't know. We wouldn't be having the whole discussion because we'd be happy, right? But that's the whole thing. So where is it? I think it's time to start the clock. That's what I'm saying. Two years, doesn't matter. Yes, it's a little early. It is. But here's the whole thing. People have bad games. People lose games, right? Teams lose all the time. Somebody loses every game, all right? The best teams ever. Only one ever didn't lose a game. That's the way it goes. There's always losing. But when we suck, when Zach sucks, he sucks so bad that it's embarrassing and it's painful. And it makes you think that he's completely inept. There's complete ineptitude. Why can't it just be like, gosh, you know, like a, a bad, like a bad game, like just not as much as the other guy. Why does it have to be this? Why does it have to be three interceptions, four interceptions, 
77 yards, nine receptions. Why do we have to endure that? If there's more, then we get three picks. If there, it's like, and that's the erratic behavior of a guy who's not made for the NFL. In my opinion, Zach needs to shape up now. This was the game. Now, maybe it's just the Patriots, right? Maybe it's just the Patriots. It's just the Pats. I just, I'm scared of them. Bill Belichick scares me. Okay, great. And he comes out and he plays great. If he does that in Chicago and everybody else, and he, and he looks good like a competent quarterback, then great. I'm just going to tell you, it's time to start the clock. The last seven games of the season are, and I, I would sit down with Zach Wilson and I would tell him, hey, okay, listen, you know, we've given you everything. Maybe we're not perfect, but we've given you every opportunity to succeed. Got your weapons, got your offensive line, got your running backs, got your tight ends, got you everything you need. You need to be able to hit the open guys. You need to hit them. And if you can't, these next seven games, we're moving on. You're going to be relegated to backup. That's what you're going to be. You're going to be a second string quarterback. And believe me, nobody in their right mind is going to pick you up and start you. You're done. You're done. I would tell them. I would. So Robert Sala came out today. He was asked uh, about the offense, whatever, and he goes, this is total dog shit. Thank you for saying that, Robert Sala. Thank you. It's total dog shit. Yeah. I believe that. I feel the same way. It's nice to hear you say that. But here's, guys, the season's not over. There's lots of guys telling they're jumping off the ledge. We're not going to win another game all year. I knew it. It was fucking fantasy. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's just the Patriots. We lost two weeks ago. The sky was falling. We came out and we beat the Bills. Now we lost again. Like, dude, it sucks. We went all the way from first to fourth. All the way from first to fourth. And it sucks. You want to know the truth? We had no business being in first place anyway. It's not who we are yet. No, it would be great. I'm with it. I was rooting for it. But didn't it feel surprising? Wasn't it a little surprising? A little, a little bit. A little surprising? Come on. Were you a little bit surprised? First place? Week 11? Really? Again, I'm happy. I wanted it. I'm pissed that we lost. I was a little bit surprised. Yeah. We got no business up there, maybe. We got to work. We got to clean up more things. We got to clean up more. We're not going to go into the playoffs and, and win with this kind of offense. Can't do it. Can't do it. So I know there was no news of the week. There was no intelligent gripe. We didn't even do the player profile. I just got right into it. It was going to be Marty Lyons. And Marty Lyons was a member of the SAC Exchange. I loved Marty Lyons. He was injured a lot. But he was with us for 11 years, and he had 43 sacks. Uh, loved Marty Lyons. I remember watching him. You know what's funny? I'll tell you this about Marty Lyons. At the very end, last couple years, you know the the little cart that they wheel out when somebody's injured? There used to be one with a Jets helmet on the front. Well, they put number 93 on it because he was injured so much. That was a joke. It was a joke. It was an inside joke on the team. They put number 93 on it. Now, Marty Lyons has the Marty Lyons Foundation. He does uh, game calls and everything like that. He's, a, he's a, still a very, very interwoven member of the New York Jets, and he's one of our best. So there you go. I meant to do it in the beginning. I had a whole bunch of stats and stuff. Ah. But there you have it, man. This was a tough week, and we're going to go into Buffalo, and we're going to get excited, and we're going to kick their ass. That's what's going to happen. Their defense has problems. Bill Belichick's got our boy. I don't know if he'll ever beat him. You see, he walked in. Play one. I could see it. First drive. I knew it. First three downs. Oh, shit. Here we go. I saw it. The chat saw it. Oh, no. Look at Zach. Look how he's doing it. He ran backwards a couple times again today. It's just, I don't know. Let's root for him. If this is the end of Zach Wilson, it's the end of Zach Wilson. It's seven more games. 
do whatever we can to be as positive as we can so we can be as supportive as we can. So if that has any impact whatsoever, we've done it. We've put in. We've done the best we could. And that is the intelligent gripe. <laughs> yeah, I snuck it in. So guys, listen, it's all right. We're fine. We're fine. We're good. We got seven more games. We're probably going to win 10 games this year. That's what I need. 10 games and we're good. I'm feeling better. I hope you are. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love you. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thanks for being here. And as always, go Jets.